waited in line just to share this experience of Venom, Candyman, Night Living Dead, The Rock, Final Destination. But I want you to know you are now entering the Cinema, Cinema Chop, Chop Shop, Shop. <laughs> with a top top and a pop pop pop. Cinema Chop Shop. What's going on, everybody? It's Davey from the 80s, and you're now entering the Cinema Chop Shop. So park your ass right there. And while you're there, don't forget to hit the like, the share, the subscribe button. Also, if you check the link below, you'll see a Patreon account. If you click it, you can become a member. All you got to do is try to recommend movies and music and trailers for me to react to. So click the damn link. Now, with that being said, we are here today to give you my top five horror movies from 2023. Now, I got a couple of honorable mentions. So let's go ahead and get into it. My first honorable mention is Sick. I believe this was like an Amazon exclusive or a Hulu exclusive uh, horror film. It's about, it's like a slasher taking place in the middle of COVID. Now, when I watched this movie, I didn't really expect much. But overall, I got to say I had a lot of fun with it. It was a, it was a very interesting movie. Had a decent little twist at the end. Had a decent reasoning behind it. Had some cool little kills. And I had a lot of fun with it. So shout outs to Sick for making us, I think, making one of the first official COVID slasher films. I know we had a COVID zombie movie, but I don't think we had a COVID slasher one. So shout out to them to, for doing that. Also, the, the, the killer's design was kind of basic, but it was it was simplistic. But yet, at the same time, it was effective. So kudos to them for doing that. I had a lot of fun with that movie. Also, honorable mention, didn't really make it into my list, but I got to admit, it was a lot better than I thought. Megan. Uh, Megan, obviously the movie about the killer doll and she did the infamous dance or whatever that got everybody ranting and raving. Uh, I know that they have the unrated version. I know that the version that was placed out in movie theaters was a more PG-13 esque one. And there's a more rated R. There was a rated R version that was released later that basically showed the kills that they kind of panned away from during the movie. But at the same time, I had a lot of fun with it. I knew something was up when I saw Two things. I knew this movie was going to be big after two things. One, uh, there were some pre-screener tickets for it. I saw like two of them. And they they came and went. And then all of a sudden, I just stopped seeing them. And usually with horror movies, especially unknown horror movies, you see them a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I just stopped seeing it. I'm like, wow, this movie's probably going to be something big. Second thing that made me feel like it was going to be big, we went to a convention and the actress from the movie was there before the damn movie even came out. So I was just like, yo, this, this movie's probably going to be big. If they're already banking, that is going to be big by even having her here. So, I mean, this is prior, this is before the trailer came out. This is before a poster came out. It was, I mean, our official poster came out and we were already seeing the, the actress at a horror convention. So that's big. So that's my honorable mentions. For 2023, shout out to those two movies for doing it, but let's go ahead and get into this list, right? Coming in at number five, we have Evil Dead Rise. Now, a lot of people have Evil Dead Rise higher on their list. I don't, I did have a lot of fun with it. I do have problems with it. I wasn't really a fan of the ending. I wasn't really a fan of uh, the monster at the end of the movie. I mean, uh, although it was practical, it was still kind of, Man, you know, I, I felt like that third act was kind of um, it was kind of lackluster. But at the same time, overall, I had a lot of fun with the movie, special effects, the cinematography, um, the people in the movie weren't really that annoying. I really was afraid that the kids were going to be annoying as shit, and they didn't bother me too much. Uh, I had a lot of fun with the movie. It, it was very enjoyable to watch. Uh, I still prefer the the remake of the original. That's not really a remake, I guess. I like that one more than this one. I know a lot of people kind of flip it, but I still enjoyed the, the remake before I like this one. Uh, but I still had a lot of fun with it. Alyssa Sutherland did a really amazing job. She carried this damn movie. I'm going to be honest with you. If Alyssa Sutherland was not in this movie, then this movie would be Garbaggio. 
Alyssa Sutherland, Alyssa Sutherland single handedly carried this movie. And the crazy thing about it is she doesn't like horror movies. <laughs> I met Alyssa Sutherland at a convention. Very nice lady, signed my stuff. Uh, and she, we conversed a little bit and she talked about how she's not really a fan of horror. And it's crazy because she's now going to be synonymous with horror. And, you know, but we, we got to look forward to the next Evil Dead movie. So let's see how that goes. It was a really cool way to kind of continue the franchise and continue the lore. So let's see what they have cooking. I got to admit it was fun. It was a lot of blood. It was a lot of practical effects, which are things I'm a huge fan of. And that automatically is probably going to get you thrown in my top five because a couple of these movies, yeah, we have the same. <laughs> they have, kind of have the same little format going on. Coming in at number four was really unexpected. We got Totally Killer, which I believe is an Amazon exclusive. This movie is about a a man in this weird looking mask. I can't even explain what the hell the mask looks like. It kind of reminds me of Stretch Armstrong from the 90s, if you guys are familiar with Stretch Armstrong. But anyway, um, this is <laughs> there's a, slack, a killing that goes down, I believe it was on like Halloween Day or something. And then later down the line, the survivors of said event, they already started their families, they got their kids and what the killer comes back after said amount of years. And for some reason, he ends up sending the girl back in the past. Like there's some sort of time machine involved in the movie. She gets sent back into the past the day that the killing was originally started. And she has to team up with her mom in order to try to figure out who the killer is. Now, this movie reminds me of The Babysitter, right? If you guys are familiar with the horror movie, The Babysitter, and if you like The Babysitter, then this is right up your alley because it feels the same way. It's a kind of a horror comedy. Um, it's it's really funny watching the daughter that grew up in the 2000s and she's a modern baby and she's trying to kind of adjust to like life in I think it's the 80s or something. And I really think they did a really good job at capturing the 80s. It really felt like I was watching like the Heathers or like the Breakfast Club or something like that. So they did a really good job with that. And the movie's funny. I thought it was really comical. And on top of that, like the killer, although his mask is very goofy, dude's sadistic. He's really menacing. And like I had a lot of fun with this movie. It's it's funny. It keeps you captivated. It's one of those movies that's not, it doesn't take itself too seriously. And you can feel that throughout the movie, but it's, it's super entertaining. It's one of those movies that you're not going to find yourself constantly looking at your phone. So shout outs to them. Totally killer. Funny ass movie. Great horror movie. If you like, um, like I said, if you're a fan of uh, The Babysitter, if you're a fan of, um, what's that other movie? I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, it'll come to me later, but trust me, you're going to want to watch Total The Killer. And I think it's, if you have Amazon Prime, it's free. Come on. Can't get mad at that. Coming in at number three, we got Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. Now, I've been looking forward to Thanksgiving all year. And I'm, not, I'm talking about both the movie and the food shit. Um, Thanksgiving is a movie about uh, a Black Friday event gone wrong. Now, this Black Friday event, automatically watching it, it's pure insanity. And <laughs> and there's practical effects and there's some cool effects. And although some of it is unbelievable, it's really cool to see a director embrace practical effects again. I hate CGI. It's annoying as shit. So it's really cool that you see directors embrace that practical side. <laughs> there are scenes in the movie where he does use CGI. Very noticeable to me, specifically that dumpster scene. But again, it's not. it doesn't really bother me because most of the movie was practical. The person that I wish was the killer wasn't the killer, but the killer was still kind of cool. And honestly, John Carver has a pretty cool damn design. Dude has a cool mask. He has a cool... He uses an assortment of weapons. Uh, he, the theme of the whole Thanksgiving theme is kind of cool. And honestly, I feel like he might be one of the most well-prepared, like well-prepared, most tactical slashers that there are. You know, there's not too many super tactical slashers. Most of the slashers are like brute force. And, you know, some of them think it out, but like they're ex they might be really good at sketching something out, but actually like, committing to it and actually putting it into motion, it comes out really sloppy like the people from Scream. You can tell there's a lot of thought and planning into the process but then like once it's executed, it comes out so damn sloppy. This movie ain't like that. 
John Carver even pulls off like a straight up heat level heist in the damn movie. I mean, I'm talking straight up tactical. And it he does it without a flinch, a hinch, no hiccups, no nothing. Everything goes through smooth. So we know that John Carver is about that business. So <laughs> John Carver, I, I, to me, is probably on this on one of the new Mount Rushmore's of modern day horror slashers. And the fact that we're getting a sequel, sequel's already been green light. That's already enough for me. I'm I'm all in. A John Carver, Thanksgiving, fun movie. I had so much fun with it. All the kills were great in the movie. They don't hold back. Eli Roth did not hold back. A lot of people are criticizing it about the story, but it's not all about the story. It's a, When you watch any 80s slasher movie, this is what you're going to get. And I don't understand what the hell people want when they see these movies. This movie was a trailer in the Grindhouse movie. It was a fake trailer. It was always meant to be kind of like a, a low-budget 80s slasher. And this is what he gave us. He gave us a low budget 80 slasher. I don't understand why people were expecting these us to love every character and want like, each character to survive. I don't give a damn about none of them characters. And I'm honestly happy that I don't because don't let me care about these characters. Just kill them. I don't care. Just John Carver, carve them up. You know what I'm saying? Do your thing. But that's my number three. Number two, talk to me. Uh, talk to me is A24's film about a young lady who seems to be having trouble fitting into society. And she kind of goes to this little party and there's this weird little procedure that everybody's doing where it's like, it's like, um, what's the word I'm saying? It's like them trends, right? When I was in middle school, the trend was people used to get high using, um, what's should call Air freshener, right? These people used to go to air freshener, go to the store, get some air freshener, do some shit to it, inhale it, and get high off of it. Fucking stupid, right? Probably before that was motherfuckers sniffing markers and glue and huffing paint and shit. You know, there's just things that generations do. This generation, they they touch this weird little hand, right? They touch this gray, slimy, tagged on hand, right? And what this hand does is it kind of acts as kind of a gateway for you to see the other side, the spirit side. And I guess it leaves you feeling some type of way because these people are getting like this weird little high feeling off it. Like they like doing it. And the thing is, like during this movie, I guess she she touched it too much and she let she left her hand on it too long. And what it ends up doing is it kind of drives you insane and it kind of blends your world with their world type shit. And we watched this movie of this girl's like slower decline into insanity or is she really insane or is it really just that her worlds are blending? But anyway, I don't want to give away too much in case you haven't seen the movie. But Talk to Me was a very well-written movie. It was well-acted, well-paced, and honestly, like you, you can't get mad at it. It was a really, really damn good movie. It was, it was basically my number one for the year until I saw this next film. So coming in at number five, we have when evil lurks now i recently watched this movie about a week ago literally a week ago uh something compelled me i was just like you know what like i heard a lot about this movie uh i know there's another movie called Sin skin of mark or skin of rank or some shit like that i still haven't watched that one um but definitely this one is on my top five list dude when evil lurks if i have to compare it with anything it's Evil Dead meets Children of the Corn. That's like the best comparison I could give you with this movie. Evil Dead meets Children of the Corn. It's these dudes that go, they live in like countryside and they go to this house. Well, they find out that somebody's been murdered. They go to this house and they find out that this lady has been harboring uh, her husband who's been possessed. They've been waiting for like a year for this some dude, I guess a specialist or something to come by and kill the demon because it's a special process that needs to be done in order for the demon to be killed in order for it not to spread. It's kind of like, it's like a disease, you know? Anyway, um, what ends up happening <laughs> is that the, the demon taunts people. Like he knows what the fuck he's doing. He's, he's a little douche. He taunts people. And apparently if you kill these demons in like a regular way, it, it helps them spread. So what these demons do is they intentionally taunt you to kill them so that they can spread. And 
you know, there's one point, the, basically the whole idea is that they're trying to get this demon out of their countryside because they feel like it's bringing like bad juju into the area. So they take them out, do false on the back of a truck, and then they can't find them. And they just leave it like that. The problem is this ends up setting off a chain of events. Uh, their town starts to become kind of like weirded and people around them start to get affected by it. And they start to become possessed and all hell basically breaks loose. This is a Swedish film, I believe. I think it's Swedish. Uh, or it's Argentinian. Oh, no, it's Ar I think it's from Argentina. Spanish film. And to me, it, I think it's the same dude that did Terrified. I haven't seen Terrified, but I heard really good things about it. This movie doesn't pull his punches. It's a, it's a, It shows the gore. It doesn't hold back on the blood. And it's just, to me, it's well acted. And it's a really interesting take on possession movies. Like, usually you see possession movies and it's always like, you know, there's a dude right there, or a girl right there, and they're like, ah, let me get somebody throwing holy water on them, hitting them with the cross. It's very, all possession movies are very straightforward. This movie was very different. And I mean, even the people that were in charge of depossessing them or killing the demons or whatever, like, they literally have a specialized task force to do it. And it's not like, um, it's not like the people that come from like uh, the Catholic Church. I forgot what's the name of it. Um, but they have their own little specialized team of people that do that. So um, it was like, like I said, it was really interesting. I really enjoyed the cinematography, blood, guts, and ass everywhere. Um, and again, like it's really, it gets creepy at times. It's it was a fun damn movie. And if I I think to me it's the best damn horror movie of two thousand twenty three, but. That's my top five. Let me know if you agree or disagree, whatever the case may be. Drop it in the comment section down below and let me know what your top five horror movies of 2023 are. I know, to me, we're in a horror renaissance. I mean, this is the first time that I feel like I've had multiple really good horror movies this year. Usually there's movies that I just like and I have to put horror movies in my top five that I really don't think that were that good, but they were just, I needed to fill out my list. This year was kind of different. I really had every per every film on my list this year really deserve that spot. Even the honorable mentions deserve to be in my top five if I had to throw it in there, but that's all I got. Let me know if you agree or disagree, whatever the case may be. Drop it in the comment section down below, and you are now exiting the Cinema Shop Shop. Hope you guys are madness today, and adios, homies. I want to play a game. Subscribe now. The choice is yours. Sitting this cinema church. <laughs>